So unfortunately, in pancreas cancer, immune therapy is not making the same strides that we've seen with other uh, cancers. Uh, PD-1 inhibitors uh, have mostly shown very little activity. In fact, the only place where there has been activity are those tumors that are MSI high, uh, which is less than a couple of percent in pancreas cancer. In the rest of the pancreas cancer, PD-1 had uh, almost, or at least for now, we don't see much evidence of activity. In terms of the vaccine strategies, there's a, there were two major strategies being looked at in clinical trials. And that's in the early setting, uh, LL, Gempantucel L, and with standard chemotherapy in the adjuvant setting, that unfortunately uh, we heard that the uh, study failed to meet its primary endpoint, uh, impress, the IMPRESS trial, and so uh, LL, Gempantucel did not seem to add benefit uh, to an adjuvant strategy. Uh, CRS-207 plus GVAX uh, was an interesting strategy that uh, vaccine, dual vaccine strategy that essentially uh, looked promising in the early stage of the development. Uh, but unfortunately, again, uh, a study that looked at the combination of the two uh, did not show any added benefit. Uh, so two failed studies with vaccines um, and very little promise from other immunotherapeutic regimens. And the problem is likely uh, and remains likely to be the same, is we have that barrier that essentially holds up all the immune uh, suppressive cells in proximity to the tumor and excludes all the good cells, the T cells, uh, the cytotoxic T cells and others, NK cells, outside uh, the tumor. And that may explain why essentially a lot of these immunotherapeutic strategies are not working in pancreas cancer. There's a caveat to that. If we can find a way to break that barrier uh, or to enhance the immunogenic potential of these tumors, we may actually be able to revisit these immune therapy strategies and attack pancreas cancer. But at this point of time, it does not seem that an immune therapy only strategy is going to be successful in pancreas cancer. My patients with pancreatic cancer constantly ask me about immunotherapies. You know, they read the internet, and then you have a meeting like ASCO, especially over the last couple of years, where uh, immunotherapy is a major component of the advances that are presented, and patients easily know about it, and they're asking me constantly about uh, can we get an immunotherapy treatment? Unfortunately, immunotherapies have not really made any advances in this disease. Pancreatic cancer tumors are notoriously um, unable to really take advantage from the immunotherapy as we know it today, the one which is used, for example, in other cancers. And the reason for that is that for immunotherapy to work, it needs a number of things. One of them is that it needs certain immune cells, we call them T cells, to be available around the cancer cell to be able to destroy the cancer cells when they are stimulated to do so. But if you don't have those cells in sufficient numbers outside of the cancer cells or, or next to the cancer cells, you cannot really utilize, for example, a check, uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors, for example, um, uh, PD-1 inhibitors that are currently uh, be being tested successfully in a number of cancers. But these checkpoint inhibitors, they require T cells, and the T cells are not present in any abundance in the tumor cells, unlike, for example, melanoma, where it has a lot of T cells infiltrating. Now, we're not giving up. We're not saying that immune therapy is not going to work in this disease. What we're saying is that on the one hand, we have to understand more how to make it work better. So we, don't, we want to have a better handle on the biology. That's being vigorously investigated. And on the other hand, we need to, to be uh, able to bring in cocktails of drugs, because one drug is not going to do it. As I mentioned, the immune checkpoint, PD-1 inhibitor is not going to do it. So we need other strategies to, to work together. And there is evidence that that will be possible. But when, I don't know. 
that will take us some, uh, some time putting those drugs together. Obviously, we need clinical trials. And one thing which we really always have to remind our colleagues in the community is that patients who are newly diagnosed with pancreatic cancer should always be considered for clinical trials. And there are clinical trials in different uh, classes of agents and also increasingly in uh, patients who, uh, who are being now referred for immunotherapy. But we don't have a standard treatment of immunotherapy. We think that we're still a, a way from having a, a treatment that is really going to be good. But at this point in time, there's active uh, effort to really understand the immune therapy uh, uh, problem in this disease and try to put a, a treatment strategy, which I can tell you is going to be a combination of the drugs, not one drug. Targeting um, the notch pathway um, in preclinical models, in experimental models, is something which is uh, certainly of uh, interest. And why? Because it's also involved in the stem cell biology. Now, stem cells are important because when we, tr when we give chemotherapy to patients, we kill cancer cells, we think that one, one of the reasons why we fail is because those stem cells are hiding, they're not being destroyed by chemotherapy, and they are resulting in the progression of the cancer or the recurrence of the cancer. And therefore, any approach that can damage those stem cells and kill them may help us to improve the outcome of our uh, chemotherapy we use. So there are agents that are targeting the notch pathway, but at this point in time, they're still experimental. We don't have really any indication that they're going to be uh, drugs that are going to show benefit in patients who are, we are treating for their pancreatic cancer.